face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another top five video from yours truly, the Scarender. And uh, yeah, this video will cover what I would believe are the most interesting Pokemon in Ultra Sun and Moon and the buffs certain Pokemon did get. Now, I'm gonna cover five. Well, I do believe there are more that really got decent buffs. These are the top five that are close to hard that are Pokemon that I definitely believe got necessary changes to become even greater. And Trogus is not one of them, sadly. But with that said, you know, we're gonna cover the new moves from Ultra Sun and Moon and just overall go over why I would deem these Pokemon more viable due to this very reason and move alone. So with that said, let's start off with the number five spot. And the first one going is Kingler. Yeah, Kingler got a decent buff this generation. Primarily in move pool, it got Stop in Tantrum, which is a 75 base ground based move, and Liquidation, which is its biggest perk this time around. Liquidation, of course, lower defenses when it hits, has a big chance of doing so, but the reason we use it on Kingler is because it packs the Share Force, and Share Force and Liquidation will mean we get a 6% boost in its already pretty darn high attacks of 130. Um, Kingler is actually a decent wall breaker, but never really had the stab to pull that off. I definitely believe Liquidation will be just that. And with agility, knockoff superpower, and of course stomping tantrum, this Pokemon will have the option of pulling that off. You also have the Share Force boost in Ice Beam, Blizzard, and of course Rock Slide and Metal Claw and Capitalize or something like that, which will mean that Kingler is now a very complete Pokemon. Well, I do believe that a more secure um, moving the finest side would help it tremendously, such as course close combat and whatnot. Uh, I don't see this necessarily a big flaw towards it, and of course it's speed enough at 70 base speed, of course with agility, to be a threat indefinitely in the lower tiers, and I definitely could see it get some usage in even the RU if the environment are correct towards it. But yeah, that said, Kingler got maybe not the biggest or broadest move pool accessibility this generation, but it got something it has been craving since Gen 1, and with Share Force in mind, this is definitely gonna fix this Pokemon as it stands today. Another Pokemon that really shined as a luck lustering Pokemon was Necrozma. Necrozma is a Pokemon that I believe was lacking tremendously due to actually not having the likes of Focus Blast. While it had Stealth Rock and have a gimmick inborn with that, its strongest set was always Stored Power with Iron Defense and Cold Mind. And um, I don't believe that necessarily has been resolved. But anything that this Pokemon brings now to the table will make it more functional. Uh, I do believe the strongest set will remain the stored power variant, but I also at the same time will say that the move pool it gets now will make the option for it more viable. First and foremost, Foden Geysa, uh, its new signature move, which will work like this. It's always a special move with our base power, but it will hit on the stats your stronger set. So if you go for Swole Stance or plus two, Photon Gazer will be specially oriented with your attack stat in mind. And of course, recite it with Calm Mind. If you go for plus one or especially offensively more capable, it will hit with that side. So a bit of a niche move, but it could work in its favor. And more certainly, if you want to capitalize on being a more physical set, since you always would hit on a special side, making the Swole Stance set really viable with Necrozma. And since it's got really brick break and stuff like that, and even gets knock up now, it has the option of pulling that off fairly alright. Uh, though the two really, really good movies it gets, or it gets single beam also, but that's not the game changer. What is the game changer is the likes of Heat Wave. This result is what I would say roughest matchup right now, which are steel matchup. It also can go physical and of course carry earthquake or brick break, but with the new move pool that are actually Heatwave, it can go fully specially offensive and it can do this quite right, making it a very, very interesting Pokemon. And I definitely can see it's beneficial more towards the leagues than I can in uh, the concept that is Wi Fi battle. But with that said, though, Necrozma has a few things going on here. It also gets Earth Power, which resolves that same thing making Necrozma, in my opinion, a very, very complete Pokemon. While I do believe it lacks Focus Blast, I also believe that this Pokemon has the option of pulling other situations off fairly all right, making Necrozma one of my best or you know, first picks here in, of course, my top five. And at my first spot, I decided to pick Pessimian. 
Well, I've not been the biggest fan of Pissimune. I think overall it's a primary copy, though then again it's more like Sock, 120 base attack, you know, 80 base speed. Um, it's a slower, more defensively active fighting type with no proper really like moves at all. And while it does get close to combat, which is nice, it is not speed enough to pulling that off. Uh, it gets that option now, with a plethora of other choices really. We have Green Punch here, it's also going to be nice assault for set. And uh, we get Gunshot, which resolve any issue it has towards Fairy types, um, which is fairly cool. We also get Seed Bomb, which can hit Rock types if you don't want to capitalize on close combat, or you know, the war, bulky water types, we're able to hit them super effectively. And what I would believe is the bread and butter of the fighting type B and getting access to Lies of Knockoff. And this will mean that Pissimia will push the boundary of what this typing really can be, and it will represent the mod's opinion. A variant of what I think Primary could have been had it more physically active and being slower. So I do believe they are on par with one another since they both usually go with a scoff set. But Pesimian, in my opinion, is the gun shot and knockoff has the stronger options. So Pesimian will be a lot more viable, like it will definitely be stronger and the elite concept will definitely be a lot better actually. Is whether or not it pushed the boundaries of any other RU um, Pokemon that are fighting types, so I definitely will. Uh, neglect that, or rather say that yeah, I don't think it's become that powerful, but it definitely will become a lot more powerful in the lower tiers, even so that it is probably going to become one of the prime example of a good fighting type in the never use. Definitely succeed in the likes of Sork, for example, due to the options this Pokemon specifically brings to the table. Now, between number two and number one, I really thought it was really tight how I wanted to tackle it, but number two will be Kama O, the semi-legendary of the Lowland region. And yeah, I mean, this guy really got a lot of things going on here that really, really does push the boundary of what this Pokemon really can be. First and foremost, by level up, it gets close combat, so now a proper fighting stab in mind, which definitely complements the likes of Dragonlance, having both capitalized on really strong dual stab now. One thing that really makes this Pokemon really good, though, is the um, C move. It got the exclusive one, you know, the, the casual Omni Boost. I um, definitely believe that's going to be really scary to be dealing with, primarily because usually you have the spec set with clanging scales, and now it doesn't force to be going by that and going by plus one no matter what. So the spec set will be shoved out the window for that set. That's clearly the stronger variant now. So the special set will definitely be down in boosting variant, though the physical set could work with that. We also have what I would believe is the more filler aspect towards this Pokemon. It has all the elemental punches, uh, which will help it quite a lot, of course, being covered in ice, which is fairly uncommon, actually, by dragon types. And of course, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, all those things are there. Drain Punch, if you want to capitalize on that, to be a more bulkier variant. And of course, Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks is something that, while it doesn't make the Pokemon on its own better, because it wasn't, it, it won't, but the thing is, it has the option of pulling that off, which is something I believe this Pokemon will... Well, it will make it a lot more viable, so I'm... I'll definitely like that. I think it's very, 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 very cool. And of course, as you definitely mentioned, it gets Iron Tail now. It's a very, very strong film move to get it with Aqua Tail. So there are a lot of things going on with Kamo. Um, it's definitely it's the one Pokemon I will believe got the most out of this Mewtwo situation. And filling that out with close combat and super power, and of course, Dream Punch, this Pokemon has the option to be whatever it likes to now. And while the speed, while lack luxury, in my honest opinion, being 85 base speed, it is very bulky. This is a Pokemon that, much like Dragonite, it has the option to set up because there aren't that many things that kills this Pokemon in the first place. And even if they do, they really need to hit this guy hard. And that's very, very, very rare. So with that said, I definitely believe Kama O will be OU if I had to pick a, a variant of this one. While you, you could be where it starts out. It, trust me, with all these aspects and just the unpredictability of the Pokemon itself, I am fairly sure this Pokemon will reach OU because of all the options it does get. While it will be viable in OU, unlikely, but it definitely will be too strong for the tiers before it. So yeah, Kamo, one of my absolute favorite threats to see in Ultra Sunny Moon, but I have one Pokemon or Pokemons that I sadly believe are much, much more important than Kamo and will of course fill our number one spot. And I'm cheating a little bit by going with this at number one. At my number one spot will be all 
the defogger Pokemon. And yeah, there are plenty, and there are so many variants here. What I'm trying to reach here is that all the Pokemon Learns defog will resolve a lot of issues that are, well, to, to put it bluntly, um, corroding the meta right now. We have a lot of situations where Hazard Stagon is your number one play, and most certainly in the lower tiers, which have made Defoggers and Rapid Spinner invaluable for every team, but they have been really scarce, and I believe that now we have the option of actually having options to which kind of Defog we like, which will broaden the variety of Pokemon in every matchup, really. Which, just to put it bluntly, means that we're going to see a lot of variety in the meta, and a lot of Pokemon get a lot more viable towards this. While I can't mention all the Defoggers, I really can say a few things about it. All the Rotoms get it, and Rotom Watch and Mo will definitely benefit the most out of that. Of course, the Ghost World of uh, Rotom Rayleigh form clearly will benefit quite a lot, uh, since it's a Rapid Spirit too. Um, we have Superior, which is a Pokemon that has very, very high speed. We have Florgius, with all the things that gets it, which is a very good move towards it. While it doesn't necessarily require it, it has the option to defog. Cliffkey, Praxer Defogger, yeah, that's that's something. I definitely can see that benefiting. And of course, now we can set up Stealth Rock Spikes and Defog with Prankster. That's, that's something else. That's new. That's definitely new to me. And of course, the Genie Trio gets... Defog, which is incredible. Um, Landorus, Tornadus, and um, of course, Thunderous, all of them gets that. While I believe Landorus makes for a fairly usable Defogger, I definitely don't believe its best set will be with Defog in mind, but you know, it gets everything. Landorus is probably the most complete Pokemon in the whole game, and this definitely does enforce that. Um, the Liscor gets Defog yet again, but with a hidden ability, so it can't be protective about its to uh, the poison heal or toxic heal or whatnot. So, yeah, the quick run on is that Defog will change the meta as we know it, and it will be the number one change for Generation 7. Uh, it's a very, very long and outlasted and long awaited change in the meta. And since they never really made more Pokemon able to rapid spin nor getting Defog, one was really looking for whether or not other moves, such as Mist or something like that, would be a two aspect for a Defog removal. Uh, but having is a tutor move yet again to actually capitalize on passive removal will change the meta as we know it forever and therefore all the defoggers are at my number one spot because while the pokemons that are mentioned here before that individual pokemon that will be a lot stronger in next generation or the next game i should say the change of defogger on its own really are a lot broad and change because it will change what is now the stature of the meta and that is something that one cannot back off on this is the number one best change coming on now in ultra sun and moon so yeah with that said guys i really hope you enjoyed this video i know that we'll cover a few things that are a bit spoilerish if you haven't played the game already but these are changes and they are tremendous while there are a lot more changes in mind i think these are top five that will change the aspect of the meta but there are more options and clearly i missed out on some so with that said which buff do you guys think are the most important one for specifically you or a buff that i just missed out on that really are huge Mention that, of course, in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thank you for, of course, watching. Can't stress it enough how awesome it is to have you guys around just to listen to my voice and going over my videos. You have no idea how much it means to me. You, you guys take your time of your day to watch me. It's, it's a task I really can't thank you enough for. So thanks, guys. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you next video. Till then, take care. Bye.